Accelerate Church Television broadcast. We're so glad you're here with us today. Shortly, we'll be joining Pastor Jeremy with the sermon series already in progress entitled Building a Strong Foundation. He's talking to us today about the importance of how and what we're building our life upon. Let's get in there right now. You're going to have to do what God said to do. The reason I shout, the reason I praise God and jump up and down and look like a fool up here is because the Bible told me to do it. The reason I come and assemble here so often is because God told me to do it, especially as I see the end time day approaching. And what are people doing? This is the end time moment. This is when it really counts. It's not the time to play games with God. So yeah, you come here, you're going to hear an urgency. I love you. I'm glad you're here. But man, you've got to get urgent about the things of God. And you can't just say, well, he's my Lord. I know Jesus is a Lord. No, no, he is Lord of the universe, but is he your Lord? See, he's Lord whether you make him Lord or not, but he won't be Lord of your life unless you make him Lord. Any lifestyle... Outside of the lordship of Jesus, in other words, any lifestyle that is not permitted in the Bible, that's if you lie all the time. It's not permitted. All liars have their part in the lake that burns with fire forever. Revelation says that, chapter 21, thank you. Yeah. All liars, even the little tiny white liars, even the professional ones that tell big ones, and everything in between, they're going to burn forever. And it's no joke. I don't mean to be callous about it. It's no joke. Oh, that people would listen to that warning. You live in adultery, let me tell you, you're on your way to hell. You live in the LGBT lifestyle, you're on your way to hell. you got to repent. Now, I don't hate on anybody. I don't hate on anybody. But the truth is the truth whether you acknowledge it or not. Your acknowledgement of the truth doesn't make it valid. It's valid with or without your acknowledgement of it. And the truth is the Holy Spirit possessed Peter in the New Testament and Jude, the half-brother of Jesus, because he wasn't conceived in Mary by the Holy Spirit, but by Joseph. That's why I call him the half-brother of Jesus. Who, by the way, Jude nor James, when you read them in the Bible, they were both the half-brothers of Jesus. They did not even believe that Jesus was Lord until after the resurrection, the very thing we celebrate today. Then they became so fierce they gave up their life and were martyred. They wouldn't give up, and they were raised in this household. If anyone knew, they knew. So Jude, possessed by the Holy Spirit. Peter, possessed by the Holy Spirit. Second Peter 2, and Jude only has one chapter. You ought to read them sometime. They both tell you this. They say, lest you forget the example of Sodom and Gomorrah, which cities burned with ashes. They're talking to end times people. Don't forget that sin has always brought down cities and nations. And any city leader that wants to put on this fake love, we love everybody. We love. If you loved them, you would call them to repent because God's made it clear how he feels about sin. Now, all sin will get you to hell unless you repent. And everyone in here sinned, including me. Well, should we just go on living a sinful lifestyle? No. If you do that, you're headed for a fall. Jesus is the one that said it in Luke 6. Aren't you thankful for the word? Yes. If you're thankful for the word in this house, say, thank God for the word. Thank God for the word. Luke 6, verse 46, it's on the screen. Why do you call me Lord? If you have a Bible right here, you ought to look. It's in red. Okay, you're going to challenge me? I'm going to look it up myself. Since I said that, I better make sure, huh? Well, too bad this isn't a red letter edition. If you have a red letter edition, it's in red. What does that mean? Oh, look, I wrote it right here. Jesus said it. Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things which I say? Verse 47, Luke 6. Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them. Just notate this. It's not good enough just to hear. You got to do it. He who hears my sayings and does them, I will show you who he's like. Okay, I love these examples. Jesus doesn't leave anything in this land of we don't know. It's mysterious. We're blind to it. No, he paints a picture. He said, he that hears my sayings and does them. Let me show you what he's like. He is like, verse 48, a man building a house who dug deep and did what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Your hearing and doing of the word 
is all foundation in your life. You've got to hear the word, you've got to do the word. You've got to hear the word, you've got to do the word. You want me to sum up life for you? Do what you're told by God. It's the only reason I'm preaching today. I didn't want to do it. I was a preacher's kid, like I mentioned. I didn't like the flack I got. Just because I was a preacher's kid. And because I was Ricky Files' boy. Now see, you didn't have my story, but that's my story. I hear people tell their sob stories of how rough they had it. I think, well, you know, did you live in small town America where, again, everybody's a good old boy, but yet they threatened to kick your bleepity bleep just because of who your dad is. They didn't bleep it out. All because, I didn't do anything. I just existed. Do you know I thank God for that now? Because that kind of childhood has made it where I frankly don't give a rip what you think. <laughs> I found something out. I don't really keep my eye on the ones that are blabbing their mouth. It's the ones that are real quiet that I watch. The ones running their mouth, they just run their mouth, just run, just run and on and on. They run. They never do nothing. They're scared. In fact, I remember this. Uh, we were outside the, the radio station, which is on the square there in Wheeler, and some teenagers were out there doing what they normally did, just hang out. There's nothing else to do, right? So drive up and down Main Street. And they're out there, and I'm sitting in the car, and and my dad walks out, and they're all, Ricky Files, something or another. And he's like, hang on right here, Jeremy. I'll be right back. And I'm like, watching this. He goes walking right out there. And they start their trucks up and their cars. Whoop, they get out of there, leave rubber on the, on the square, getting out of there. They like to talk big, but when it's time for confrontation, whoop, out they go. Well, whose characteristic is that? Well, Peter said it was the devil's. He walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. When he sees you coming for him armed with the word of God, living, living out the lifestyle of godliness, the devil's going to get on the run. But, you know, you're just screaming at the devil ain't going to do nothing. It's going to have to be your lifestyle walking this out. Amen. Jesus said this, he that hears and does my sayings is like a man that dug deep and laid the foundation. What does that mean? It's going to take some time in this word to understand it. You got to take some time because see the biggest problem we have right now is an ignorance of this word. People don't know what to do because they don't know the word. If they only knew the word, they would know what to do. Why do you think it is when it's time, like right now for the preacher to start preaching, you start getting sleepy about a sleepiness will hit you, but you know, you're watching your favorite sports team. You never deal with that. Don't make me come down there and stare you right in the eyeballs. <laughs> You don't get sleepy around certain things, you know, tinkering with that car. It, it just, you just don't get sleepy. But when it comes time for the word, you get sleepy. Why is it? Because this could change everything about your life. Why? Because then you can attach to the rock. Yeah. And when a flood comes and the stream beats on you, you ever felt like that? Like there's a stream beating on you? It says vehemently here. That means... It's kind of like all hell's coming against you. I'm not cussing. It's hell itself is coming against you. You ever felt that way? Well, step out and try to do something for the Lord, and then you'll feel that way. Because the devil hates it. He hates it when you get in the Word. He hates it when you do anything that has to do with your foundation. He wants you just to build over there on the sand. But God wants you building on the rock. Notice this. A flood, a storm still comes to you even when you hear and do the word. Some people hear the word preached and hear the word of faith, which is my background, and they say, oh, well, you make it sound like it's just all easy. No, there's going to be some storms. There's going to be some battles that you, you go through. There's going to be some Goliaths. No, you're not David. No, you're not on the battlefield. But you've got your own giants you're going to have to take on. And the only way you're going to defeat them is to do what David did in that situation, not what Eliab and the rest of them did. There is a, who, who's Eliab? See, we don't know the names very well of the guys that were hiding behind the rock. The rock that was hiding them there. They were hiding when the Goliaths out there, send me a man to fight. That's what I'm talking about. You ought to read it in Samuel sometime. Send me a man to fight. Eliab, David's older brother, didn't like it when David showed up and said, who is this guy? Who is this uncircumcised, out of covenant with God, talking dirt? On God's covenant people. You know what Eliab did? What the good old boys club does. What's that? Who do you think you are? Go back to your dad's little sheep. 
Go on, insignificant one. What you're doing is nothing. Go back. Wait, wait, Eliab, you're the one hiding behind the rock. You're telling David he's not doing anything, but you're the one hiding. He said, I'll take him out. And he did. Now you're not going to take out a giant by hiding. We believe in linking up with like-minded believers. And that opportunity comes twice a month where we get to come together with our life links and dig into the current series that Pastor Jeremy is preaching on. We eat together, we laugh together, we pray together, and we build those godly relationships that are so vital to our Christian walk. We must be intentional with who we surround ourselves with, so we invite you to join us for Lifelinks happening on the second and fourth Sunday nights of every month. For more information regarding Lifelinks and where they meet, you can text the word Lifelinks to the number 74121, or you can head over to our website at acceleratechurch.cc. Or hey, you can give us a call at 806 418 8913. We look forward to seeing you in the next Life Link. When giants show up in your life of sickness, of depression, any disease under the curse, it better hear your voice speaking against it. But you're not going to do that if you don't know the word. That's why you got to hear the word. You got to get in a place where you have a steady stream of the word of God coming in. And you can't stop there. As he goes on to tell us about that in a minute. Here's what he says now, though. Those that hear and do. So simple. All you need is a word from God. You hear, you do. You got that? You hear it, you do it. Stop worrying about, well, what all am I doing wrong? You need to do what you know to do. Don't worry about what you don't know. Think about what you do know. And then God will take care of what you don't know down the road. We couldn't know everything about God. No, but you know, you know this, that you got to hear his word and do it. When he says do something, do it. Then watch the fruit in your life. Now, I'm living this out in front of you. That's why I don't, I'm not bragging on me. I'm just, there's a lot of areas where I haven't done it before. That's why it was so long before I got into God's perfect will in my life. But when he tells me, start a Christian school, I'm going to start a Christian school. And I don't care what mocker belittles it. I don't care what other Christians say, oh, well, a bunch of rebels in Christian schools. I know because they've been in your household, Jack. <laughs> and seen the real thing lived out. That's why. Wow. But the fruit is the fruit. And the fruit is this. I want to get ahead. See, ooh, look, guys, there's a building over here. We could do all this to it. Oh, sure, it's going to cost us 200 grand just to fix what we need to fix to get it ready to then to build uh, what we need to build in it. Oh, look at this, look at this. Team, look at this. Let's go, let's do a walkthrough. Now, thank God we brought a preacher uh, through here named Billy Brim, who, you know, I, I, I wouldn't say we're real close, but we brought her in. We're on good terms, praise God. And she sat on that front row in that smaller building over on Paramount Street. And she said, by the Spirit of God, she, she didn't even know about this, guys. Like, no natural talking about this. She said, uh, uh, Pastor Jeremy, yes, ma'am, after she was preaching, you ought to remember that if you were there that, that day, she said, that old building's not it. Well, I took notice. You know why? Because in my spirit, the Lord had already spoke that to me. But I'm trying to get ahead of God because I want to make things happen. Instead, I said, whoa, hold on. I recognize the voice of God. And if God says no, then what do I say? No. Am I serving God or not? What am I telling you? You do what you're told. You do what you're told. How hard is that? Seemingly pretty hard. Look at your life. God's called you, like I'm going to show you, out from the world. But you still play in the world. You just got to do what you're told. This isn't hard. It's not rocket science. We're all in the same boat, though. We just do what we're told, which means we're like children. The question is, are you a child of the devil or the child of God? It's your choice. Choose this day whom you're going to serve. All right, all right, all right. I got to go here. I got to be teacher. I keep wanting to be preacher here. 
The flood arose, storms come, even when you hear and do the word. Don't live in this pipe dream and I'll never face anything. You're going to face some battles. Don't use those battles and the details in those battles as excuses to back up from being who God called you to be. So many people do that. First thing that goes is church. And you wonder why the devil's beating you down. Because battles are coming for everybody. But it's the word of God that's the parent force of the universe that gives you the power over all the power of the devil. The flood arose, the stream beat vehemently against the house. It could not shake it. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken for the American. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken for the American Christian. You've got to make sure you got your roots on the rock, your foundation on the rock. Could not shake it for it was founded on the rock. Man, that's so powerful. Isn't that great? What if he just ended there? We could all shout and go home, but he didn't. He started talking about you and me right in front of our face. Because he said in verse 49, but he who heard and did nothing. All you got to do is nothing. See, some of you done messed up. You're thinking, oh, Lord, help me. Why did I even come to church? Well, you're here. So you're going to hear a word from God. And here's the thing. Here's another chance for you. I say, here's another chance for you. What? What What are you talking about? I don't get it. To do it. What? What you're told. I'll lay it out here from Scripture, just point blank, what you're supposed to do. The very basic, foundational part of Christianity, Jesus being Lord of your life, living the Lordship lifestyle where He's your Lord. He already decided your opinion on the LGBT movement. Why do you need to adjust your mindset and viewpoint? Just because a family member yielded to that spirit? Oh, that tells me that you haven't dealt with the idol of family yet. People say, man, there's nothing like family. Family is everything. No, no, no. Obedience is everything in the kingdom. Accelerate Christian School is located in Amarillo, Texas and offers individualized learning for students kindergarten through 12th grade. With scripture-filled curriculum, daily devotions, and weekly chapel services, our number one priority is instilling God's Word on the heart of the next generation. Our regional and international student conventions encourage and train our mighty warriors in competitions both academically and physically. With events in academics, athletics, exhibits, music, and platform, your student will be challenged and inspired to develop their God-given gift and talent. For more information regarding Accelerate Christian School, please visit our website at AccelerateChristianSchool.cc or you can call our office 806-418-8913. Obedience is thicker than blood. That's the way we roll in the kingdom of God. Now natural minded people will struggle with that all their life. Obedience is thicker than blood, meaning your loyalty to God has to supersede mom and dad, child, wife, cousins, aunts, uncles, on down the line you go. I love all those folks in my life, but not all those folks in my life have a strong foundation. It's not my fault. We're all responsible for our own foundation. Write it down. We're all responsible for our own foundation. You're responsible for your foundation. I'm responsible for my foundation. My wife's not even responsible for my, my foundation. I'm not responsible for her foundation. We're responsible to build our own foundation. What is that? Hearing the word and doing it. If you do that, it'd solve all marriage problems. Husbands, love your wife like Christ loves the church. You know, the men say, well, I'm the man, I'm the leader, she's got to submit. Well, you hadn't led in love yet. Why don't you step out and lead, then she'll know what to follow. See, people don't like that. she got to submit anyway. You ignore the verse written to you. That's a problem. If he's your Lord, you can't ignore what he told you to do. Oh, Jesus is Lord. He's been calling you for years to get planted in a church, to be a part of supporting the movement of the kingdom of God. Yeah, I just, I just can't. Why? Well, I got I to gotta be able to retire. God will make your retirement better than you could ever dream. 
if you'll do what he told you. But if you don't, then here's what happens. When you retire, it won't be long until you fall dead because you wrapped up everything that you were supposed to be doing in your job. This is the Lord dealing with people right now because I didn't, this, this is not my notes. Now look at this. He who heard and did nothing. Every one of us have been in that boat at some point in our life about some subject. Train your children in the way they should go. Should I talk about that one? I'm just, I get in these, these modes where it's like I see all these idols that the American holds up as dear, and I like to do what Moses did to the golden calf. Burn it and make you drink it. Because I love. That's what a loving leader would do. You train the children the way you think they ought to be, the way grandpappy and grandmommy taught you. If it wasn't biblical, you better run. People brag, man. They brag on it. I got my degree. Look, I got my degrees up in my office. That's great. That's great. There's nothing wrong with the degree. But if it's not based on the knowledge of God, then it's a degree in error most of the time. You become educated around something that doesn't matter. Because why? The beginning, get this, of knowledge and the beginning of wisdom is the fear of God. So if it's not built on you defer, that's one of the meanings of fearing God, you honor to him. You honor him. You defer to what his word says. Then you're not his. I don't care what you say. Why will many go to him on that day? Many, not a few. And talk about prophesying and casting out demons. When's the last time you did that? Meaning you're not even at that point yet. Many of you aren't. I'm not dissing you. Even I'm myself. I, I don't go around casting out demons all the time. I will if one shows up. But I'll tell you this. These people tell Jesus. I prophesied, cast out demons, all these good works I did. And he will say, depart from me. I never knew you. You worked lawlessness. Translation, you did what you wanted. You didn't have me as your Lord. We got to get this right. We get one life. It's like a vapor. How on earth I, could I be 43 years old? I still can't figure it out. I feel like I should be 23. It's flying by. I got a teenager in my house. Pray for me, would you? She's a good one. I got a couple of preteens right behind her. Pray hard. Sometimes I'm like, Mama, you just deal with them. I don't even understand. The Lord gives me understanding. Praise God. Life isn't that difficult. We make it so difficult because we don't do what we're told. If we did this at our workplace, we'd be fired the way we walk with God. Your boss says, I want you to show up at 830, but you show up at 1030. Your boss says, I want you to accomplish this task and focus on this this week. But you show up and you focus on a task that you're doing over here. How long are you going to keep working there? Uh, see, again, somebody says, I'm looking for something deeper than this. Well, let's handle this before we get deeper. Before we build up high, let's make sure the foundation can handle this. Right? You see, we're dealing with an issue here of Jesus being Lord that is foundational. That most everyone in this room say, I got you, Pastor. I hear you. I understand it. But when it comes to actually living in such a way where the first 10% that comes in goes to God, you don't do it. You do what you want. That's a problem. That means you're building your life on shaky ground, not on solid concrete rock of the word. And if you do nothing with the word that's even coming forth today, you're like a man who built a house on earth without a foundation. So the difference here is, notice the same thing as you hear. Both people heard. The one with the foundation does the word. The one without a foundation doesn't do the word. And guess what happened? The stream beat against it vehemently. Immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. God doesn't want that in your life. But you doing nothing with the word that he presents to you is like a builder building a house without a foundation. Now how many would sign a contract with a builder like that? You wouldn't. You wouldn't do it. If you say, I'm finally going to dream my build house, my, I'm going to build my dream house, Pastor. I'm going to do it. And you go meet with the builder. 
and you sit down with him. And he says, okay, I, I'm going to save you lots of money. We're going to skip the foundation. Let me sign up right now. What would you do? You'd be out of there quick. You'd say, I thought this was a real builder. I think the Lord's looking at your life and saying, I thought you were a real Christian. You said I'm your Lord, but you don't do. Remember, that's how he started out asking this. Why do you call me Lord and not do what I say? Again, it doesn't take the sharpest tool in the shed, thank God, that means I qualify, to understand that a fall is coming in the life of the person who does nothing with the word. Let's read through this in the message paraphrase. Check this out. Why are you so polite to me, Jesus says? You always say, yes, sir. And that's right, sir. I couldn't help but think of my kids. They've learned that I expect them to say, yes, sir. If their mom talks to them, I expect them to say, yes, ma'am. But it's funny because children do this. And if you're honest in here, your children have done it at some point. Uh, they'll go through the motions. Yes, sir. Then they just stand there and look at you. <laughs> go make your bed. Yes, sir. That means move. <laughs> Got one amen over here. Do you have children? I mean, come on. Is it just me? Hey, Enoch. Yes, sir. I need you to take out the trash. I'm playing Fortnite, Dad. And what does that got to do with the price of beans? You know what he was saying? What? That's what I'm saying to you. Fortnite? Yeah, I'm playing with people in the church. Well, good. I'm glad you're getting good at that, but the trash needs to be taken out. It's got to go beyond the yes, sir, and the polite. Jesus said, why do you say yes, sir? That's right, sir. But never do a thing I tell you. That's a good question, isn't it? Why don't you do a thing I tell you? These words I speak. Oh, man, pay close attention. They're not mere additions to your life. Homeowner improvements to your standard of living. They are Foundation words. If you're taking notes, write that down this morning. The Word of God, His words, you can write this way. His words are foundation words. His words are foundation words. They're words you can build a life on. To pause right there for today. You can finish the series next time. Or more importantly, if you'd like to go online, you can find it all at AccelerateChurch.cc. Under the Sermons tab, you can find this Building a Strong Foundation where Pastor Jeremy teaches it all right there online. And if you're in the area, we'd love to meet you. We have service time Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. You are welcome to join us for any and every service you're available. We'd love to see you at Accelerate Church, 4400 South Crockett in Amarillo.